Hi, this is Marge with Painting with Marge. Um, I had made this pour that was inspired by Crafty Jen probably a couple weeks ago. And it was very popular, so I decided to do a tutorial on how to create her. Um, as you can see, there's a few things that I would do different than what you're going to see, and I'll probably tell you what they are as we go through the steps. What I liked about this particular version was that I did not put paint, white paint as thick close to the vinyl stencil, the edge where her contour is. Um, I think I would do things a little bit different because the paint right next to the vinyl was very thick and there was some bleed going under it. But I'm going to explain to you how I um, prepare my canvas. This is a 10 by 20 inch canvas. I have taken Oracle 631, which is semi-permanent vinyl. And I have cut the silhouette of this lady with my Cricut. And here I am peeling the negative space to add to the canvas and I will not be using the rest of her. I could probably save this for another project. I have not prepped my canvas at all here. What I am doing here is lining the negative portion of my stencil probably a little over a quarter ways into the left side of the canvas because I want to have some space without pour in front of her that we're going to paint over and add a drop shadow to. Now here you see me position it and then I sort of change my mind and lift her up and reposition her. And since I haven't made any hard commitments, yet I am able to easily lift, her, lift the stencil up and reposition it. As I am placing the vinyl where it, I want it to be, you'll see me go over the seams, the edges, the inside edges with my finger to try to make as much contact with the canvas as I can removing any air bubbles. And I lift and put back as needed. And then what I'm gonna do is lift my canvas and take the edges, the top and bottom edges and just wrap them under the canvas for now. And I forgot to mention that the stencil I had to cut with a scissor just where the neck and the head stops so I could peel it off. Now what I'm gonna take is some white craft paint. It could be any white paint you want, just we don't want it to be heavy body paint. We want something a little softer. Now, what I would do different than what I've done here is taken a wider flat brush than what I used here and painted white further into the right side of the stencil. So you wanna cover the edges very good with this paint because what this is going to do is seal the edge of the stencil to the canvas. I am using white because I will be using white on the right side to then swipe over my colors. If I was using blue in, or black, then I would be using the black or blue paint in this case instead of white. So you wanna match the color of the main color you're gonna be using immediately after or close to the inside edge of your stencil. So in this case, of course, it's white. And again, I wish I would have used a thicker brush 
to paint white a little further into it. And I'll explain that in a minute why. Crafty Jen, what she uses is the polymer gloss medium and varnish. In other words, just um, a Liquitex medium to seal the edges. And she also lifts up the vinyl and uses it as a, as a glue. And, um, you know, whatever works, as long as you create somewhat of a seal so your paint doesn't seep in. Now, you'll see in a minute why I did have some seepage. And um, what I've done here, I've let it dry. I've put it in front of the fan to um, let it dry. And now I am going to apply my colors for my swipe. So in this case, I've taken for this, I've taken Liquitex Basics Phalo Blue. I've taken Cerulean Blue. I've taken some Pibio Iridescent Blue Green and some Artist Loft co Metallic Cobalt to mix that together. My silver is Liquitex High Flow Silver. And then my white is um, the Artist Loft High Flow White. I will put in the description my recipe and how much of everything I put into do my colors for the swipe. As you can see, it is a little thicker than what I would use for my Dutch pours. And I am probably using two ounces of each of the colored uh, colors and about three ounces of white. I probably had um, four to five ounces in that cup there, and I probably could have gotten away with just three, maybe four. So here I am just adding the different colors, layering, and not in any specific order. And you'll see me at some point, <laughs> there we go, take the stick and um, smear some of the paint because I did not get good coverage with the color so you want to be sure that as you drizzle your paints try to get as much of your canvas as possible so next you're going to see me um, go for the white paint and again here is where i feel like i goofed this one up a bit i put paint right over the seam of the lady <laughs> And I wish I had not done that because the paint got so thick around the edges that it seeped under despite me sealing it with the white paint. So instead, I would have started maybe half inch into um, or from the seam and added the white paint. Now here, what you see me do is take strips of paper towel, which I have sprayed with water and I am placing it over the white part of the paint, letting it sit there just for a second. And then I am starting to drag and I am wiggling that paper towel. So instead of doing a straight swipe, I am wanting to do the wiggle to give the illusion of hair. I'm gonna to proceed to do this through the remainder of the canvas. Um, and the other thing I forgot to do, and you probably will want to do this, is add some heat. Use your torch or a heat gun to get rid of some bubbles. And I did it after the fact. Luckily, I didn't have a lot of um, bubbles to have to deal with here. So I had just pre-cut these pieces of paper towel use my spray bottle to dampen the, the bottom edges. I am just very slowly taking them. There's no rush. And I am, again, starting at the white part and then just dragging. You'll see that as you do your swipes, 
that silver is starting to come to the surface and create some really nice cells. Now, after I did this last swipe, you're going to see I did sort of a, quote, boo-boo. And there I missed a spot, thought I'd be smart and just come back and swipe again. Well, I didn't like how that looked. And as I looked at the entire composition, I just felt like I needed more of the blues to come to the surface. So what you're going to see me do is just take those used paper towels, I just turned them around, and start doing a second set of swipes. No rhyme or reason other than just trying to surface some more color, and I wanted it to be very abstract. I didn't want it to be perfect. I wanted it to be wavy because I wanted to give the illusion or impression that it was hair. And I'm kind of liking um, how this is looking. So I'm bringing more of the blues to the surface and dragging off more of the white. Again, I felt like I had over flooded that section with white. My original painting, I added less white and it was probably a little thinner. So with that said, the thinner your paint, the more you're gonna be dragging off with that paper towel. I thought I was going to try to get some of that paint from the edge of the stencil by tilting the canvas, but it wasn't budging. And I also didn't want to mess up my nice curls or waves that I had there. So here I got my heat gun, couldn't find my torch, so I used my heat gun and added some heat to get rid of some of the bubbles air bubbles and also try to surface some more of the blues and create some cells. I almost feel like the liquid tax high flow silver that I used created some very nice cells, probably the best cells that were surfaced there. The white also create, helped create some lacing. So I here I felt like I needed to add some more movement closer to the face. So I took the back end of my brush. I had a paper towel there off camera and I just very lightly did little squigglies, cleaned off the end every time I did and add little swirls didn't want to overdo it or lose any of the cells or, you know, my main composition, just adding a little bit more to it. It's just wanting to add more movement. Maybe perhaps surface some more of the blues that are under the white there towards um, the left side. I wanted to soften it up some. And you'll see here in a bit, this actually dried beautifully. All the cells came up. It did take a while to dry and some parts still didn't get completely dry because the white was so thick, but I wanted to go ahead and remove the stencil while it was not completely dry to where it would just pull up paint, but still have some elasticity or flexibility to be able to pull that up without doing a lot of damage. 
So you definitely don't want to wait. Um, if it's very thick, you want to wait until it's maybe three quarters dry to pull it up just to avoid it ripping up some paint. Here I am just taking my hands and taking some paint and rubbing the edges of the canvas to um, add color, the blue color to the sides. So after I'm done putting color to the sides, I then let it dry overnight. And here is the dry piece. There are still spots on here. As you can see, the shiny parts that are um, still wet, not completely dry. And um, I want to be careful not to put my finger in it, although you'll see at one point I did do that accidentally. So I am going to very carefully go to the back and start peeling the vinyl off. There are some pieces, especially around the chin, that I had some seepage underneath. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have sanded that off with fine grit sandpaper before painting over it but um, didn't have any handy when I was doing the tutorial. But just keep in mind, um, I know that Crafty Jen has a Dremel and she uses that to lightly sand away any um, thick paint that has come under her vinyl. So you may wanna do that to clean some of that off. And there I am pointing to the chin and it really bothers me, but um, I should have, but I didn't take the time to clean it up. So just a word of caution, if you do have something like that to come under and it's fairly thick, you might want to use a little sandpaper to clean those edges a little bit. If it's not too bad and not goopy, then don't worry about it. So here I have chosen cobalt, metallic cobalt blue by Artist Loft. And um, what I'm gonna do is use a number four round brush. I do have a cup of water close by to um, water down my paint just a little bit. And I am going to turn, I turn my canvas around just to make it easier for me to get to the edges. And I am very carefully starting by painting the edges and there's that chin. Boy, it did bug, bug me, but I chugged on and I proceed to simply paint the outline. If I have any blue, and I did, that went over the edges, I tried to clean them off. You'll see later where I take, take some titanium white and go over that to clean those up. So any mistakes you make, um, you can certainly clean those. Now, after I started using this paint, I realized I did not have enough of this color throughout the hair. So I have taken the brush and I am applying very thin lines with my number four brush of that paint. Um, I'm adding some water and I am just softening up the hairline, if you will, and adding some more of this cobalt blue, metallic cobalt blue throughout the hair, just so that matches my, um, my, the rest of the canvas, the color I'm using here. Um, you can use any color you want. So these are just suggestions. And what I'm doing here after I've done the edges, I am then taking my wider flat brush and again, watering down my paint with a little um, bit of water and I am applying a first coat. I then take my canvas, put it in front of a fan, dry it, and then I come back and I am going to be applying a second coat.
I am taking my brush and doing the same thing I did the first time, taking um, the number four round, a little bit of water, a little bit of paint, and applying that second coat around the contour of the face and taking my flat, larger brush, wider brush, and doing my second coat. Now, depending on the transparency of your paint you're using, you may have to do three coats. You really want to try to use an opaque paint that doesn't have much transparency, um, or else you'll have to add more coats to get good coverage. So here I have finished my second coat. Now I'm ready to start working on my drop shadow. I already had some pre-mixed turquoise and I am taking a number four flat, I believe, or shader brush. I'm taking some medium, putting a little bit of that on the plate because that's going to help make my darker paint translucent. So I've taken Liquid Tech Basics Phalo Blue and Phalo Green, 50% of each, and made a turquoise. And I had this left over, so I thought, what the heck? Let's let's just use that. It will go. It will it will match the colors here. So um, I've taken that brush, um, added some paint to my plate that I'm using my palette, and I'm wa wa wiping down most wiping, sorry, wiping off most of that color. Um, dipping my brush in the medium, in the paint again, and I am going to, at first I decided to wipe off um, a lot of that paint before taking it to the canvas, just to make sure that I have a translucent and not over, you know, powering um, paint there. Here's where you want the transparency to go. So I'm going right against the edge and a lot of it I do rubbing and then just blend in um, as you come out from the edge. So you want the color that is closest to the contour to be darker and lighter as you come out. So here I am just adding the contour. You can see I went over the nose a little bit, had to clean that out. And I am very carefully going around the contour with the medium and this turquoise, dark turquoise color. I'm going over the sides as well. And here I am adding a little bit more darker color towards the edge. I felt that it was not popping enough. And you'll see me go a third time with just the aligner brush, um, my um, round brush later to do that. And here I'm just taking some medium and just brushing around the contour to soften it up. I am taking some golden titanium white, just whatever white you have, and I'm just cleaning up some areas where I may have gotten gone over the blue. And at some point, you'll probably see me go take a little bit of white accidentally into the blue and have to touch that up as well. There you go. Now I'm taking my detail brush. I believe that is a size zero or one. And I'm going mostly into that turquoise right against the edge. And that's going to add my last piece of pop or depth to the contour. And I'm happy with it. I feel I am done. And this is how you do this painting. It is actually very easy. It's just a little tricky in spots, and I think I've been able to mention those. Um, I think that um, you will enjoy it, and you might want to visit Crafty Jen's um, tutorial that she did a couple years ago on this as well. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, just put them in the comments. Let me know what you think.
I appreciate you watching and see you soon.